Hello, everyone. My name is Kenny. I'll be moderating the session. This presentation is called Testing the Test Engine, How We Prepared for Final Exams by Load Testing, Testing Quizzes with JMeter. It will be presented by Sean Foster. Sean is an e-learning technology specialist at Western University in London, Ontario, Canada. As a member of the e-learning technology team in the Central Technology Department at Western, Sean works closely with instructors, with other e-learning specialists, and with local application developers to use and improve Sakai for Western and the Sakai community. On the side, Sean contributes to Sakai through his interest in web design and usability. Please remember to mute yourself when you're not speaking to avoid distracting background noise. We have set the room to mute participants upon entry, but attendees do have the ability to unmute themselves in order to speak or ask a question. Be sure to double check and make sure that you're muted. If you have any questions, enter them in the chat box. You can enter questions at any time and we will either address them during the session or answer them at the end, uh, depending on what Sean wants to do there. This session is being recorded and will be available at a later date on the Sakai YouTube channel. If you have any problems with video or audio, enter a comment in the chat box. And with that, I'll hand it over to you, Sean. Thanks so much, Kenny. And thanks everybody for attending today. Hopefully you can hear me okay. And uh, yeah, welcome. We're going to be talking about uh, testing the test engine as, as Kenny said, and uh, it'll just be a little background on our introduction here um, at uh, my school to uh, JMeter and how we used it over the summer and uh, uh, a little bit of introduction to anyone who hasn't used it. So let's dive right in. Just a quick introduction. Uh, Kenny did a little bit of an introduction, but just who's talking to you and uh, who I am. Um, so as Kenny said, I'm an e-learning technology specialist at Western University here in London, Ontario, Canada. And at Western, I work in the central IT department and I do a lot of uh, the LMS support and, and uh, administration with the rest of my team. Um, we do also do instructor, uh, instructor training. And then on the, I also do front end development primarily for Sakai and uh, project management. And then within Sakai, I'm a part of the core team in PMC. I also lead the JIRA triage in Sakai UX and I'm Perio fellow from a few uh, years ago. And just a little background about Western. Western University is located in London, Ontario, Canada as well. And uh, we're a public research uh, university here. We have about 12 faculties. Um, we have just shy of 34,000 full-time enrollments as of, last, uh, as of the 2019 year, uh, about 1,300 faculty, 2,500 staff, uh, 10,000 annual course uh, sections uh, each year. And uh, we've been on Sakai since uh, 2012. And about uh, each year, we have about 5,000 annual course sites uh, that get created in uh, Sakai. And our branding of Sakai is called OWL. So I'll probably mention OWL throughout the presentation um, so that you'll know what I'm talking about. It's just our branding of Sakai. So um, yeah, we, 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 uh, we use uh, Sakai pretty heavily. So um, just a bit of a uh, background and a little story to start us off here. Uh, last March uh, is when the uh, pandemic came through our area. And that's when we started talking as a university about uh, shutting down the university and working from home and, and trying to finish out the rest of the winter term uh, for us, which uh, would be ending at the end of April. And so our exam periods in, uh, in April uh, spanned about three weeks um, from about the, the first or second week of April to the end. And uh, we wanted to be able to finish out the, uh, the, the winter term. And so the question came up can we run final exams for the 3,500 courses in OWL? And uh, we had been talking for a while that uh, about doing some remote proctoring and, and doing some uh, uh, final exams, but we haven't we hadn't got to that part, uh, at, especially at this scale of doing all of them in OWL at once. And we've done lots of successful tests and quizzes all throughout uh, the term, large classes, uh, large class sizes but um, we had never really done final exams. So really our, all we could ask, or all of our, our answer could be was really just maybe. So in the end, we ended up deciding that since uh, students were going back home and, and to different places and instructors were in transition as well, uh, that it would be better to try to do asynchronous types of assessment to finish off the term. And so there was a lot of, uh, of work around that. Um, but then June came along and uh, we were into our summer term and the question came back up 
can we run final exams in OWL? And uh, that time, now that we were kind of moving into the, um, the remote learning area, um, for all of our courses, we were um, we needed a, a better answer this time. So the answers that we, uh, the options that we had for answers were yes, we can, or yes, with a condition. Uh, yes, if we have more resources, whether that's like technical resources, infrastructure resources, or, or uh, e-learning resources, and then uh, no was an option, but probably the, the wrong answer. So um, this was last June, and it was time for us to find out what the answer to that question would be. Just going to give you a little spoiler alert uh, to the end of the story here that uh, three, three months went by and we did 32 uh, rounds of over 30 hours of production testing and uh, so that we could get some answers. So that's what's coming at the end of uh, my presentation today. But first, before we get there, uh, we got to get a project started. So uh, we quickly spun up a, a project around this and we were looking to answer some questions um, related to the, the main topic about can we can we do final exams in OWL? And we want to know how many um, max simultaneous quiz attempts, simultaneous seats um, were needed for final exams and how many students uh, can be taking an exam at one time. Uh, what would be the size of the quiz? That would be like the number of questions in the quiz and how would that affect the results? How do things in uh, tests and quizzes um, such as question pools, images, and the use of LaTeX um, affect performance of uh, a test and quiz? And then does the, is it better performance if, if we have one question per page or all uh, the questions on one page and um, which one is, is more performant and, or does, does it matter? So these were some of the questions that we had, some supplementary questions to the main question that we were trying to answer. So then we started looking at, okay, if we're gonna test uh, testing quizzes, which is also known as the Samago project. Um, so I'll be using those interchangeably in this presentation. Um, we wanted to look at, okay, what are the, all the different combinations and variations that we, we might need to be testing for? Uh, because it isn't just say multiple choice questions that um, could be potentially used in final exam. So uh, we made up this list of different things such as the number of questions per quiz, the number of parts per quiz, all question types, not just the multiple choice ones, the use of question pools, the amount of times that students work on a quiz, so that's their actual think time, uh, the quiz availability, um, so when it opens and when it closes, the quiz timer, how, how long they actually have to take it, um, the number of students taking one quiz, the same quiz, and then the number of quiz, uh, the number of students taking any quiz at the same time, uh, whether, and as I said on the previous slide, uh, about questions all on one page or uh, um, one question per page, uh, randomize of the answer order, uh, the use of the honor pledge, images in the questions, attachments in, in the quiz and the questions, and then the use of LaTeX. And uh, so the, we brainstormed this list, uh, put them all together, that, and we somehow had to figure out how we were gonna test all of this together. So as I said, we put a project around this and we had a team that was made up, it was a relatively small team, of about six of us, um, that was made up of uh, a few LMS uh, uh, admins, a few of our um, OWL admins, uh, a couple developers, a database admin, server admin, and um, a project manager. And so that was our team. And so the first thing that we needed to do was figure out, okay, so how we were gonna test this. So we looked at three products uh, for that do load testing and stress testing, um, OpenLoad, K6, and JMeter. Uh, OpenLoad was uh, a product that uh, another uh, team in our department had been using for uh, um, stress testing a, a smaller application. And so there was some previous experience there. There was, however, some licensing costs to that, and, and they were quite uh, expensive as they ramped up to the larger numbers that we were looking at testing for. Um, it, it's based on harsh uh, test scripts, so you can uh, do it in the browser and, and then export your, um, your test scripts right from the browser. Uh, the interface itself for running the tests were browser-based, and uh, the, the tool is by open demand systems. Um, we also talked to Longsight about it, and uh, they were currently using a product called K6, and uh, it, it has both an open source and a cloud model. Uh, it uses JavaScript, so you write your test scripts in JavaScript, and then you um, use the command line to um, to operate the, the scripts. And then another one that came up um, from talking with Longsight, as well as we'd seen it in the uh, um, mentioned in the community, was JMeter, uh, which is an Apache project. It uh, is built in Java as a Java desktop application, so it runs on any OS that 
can run Java, so the, the big three, Windows, uh, Mac, and Linux. Um, it's all based on HTTP requests for the test script, so you can record those and then play them back. It is fully open source, and it's had a long history of use. It's been around for a couple of decades. So, um, so we were looking through all of those, and um, we created um, a, require, a list of requirements um, that we wanted for our, our test product or test tool. Um, we wanted it to be able to do a large number of virtual users to so have that capacity. We wanted it to be um, able to, to create the test through the browser um, because OWL uh, or Sakai is, is um, we want to be able to record it from the web. Uh, we wanted a small learning curve because we had a very short timeline. We were trying to get an answer by the end of the summer. Uh, we wanted to be able to parameterize our tests so that we could pass in different variables and stuff for answers and, and uh, logins and that sort of thing. We wanted to be make sure that it was testing all of our server nodes for OWL and not just targeting one, for example, directly. Um, we wanted to make sure that we had the supported infrastructure if we had to host it locally, that we it was uh, um, for infrastructure that we, we knew how to support. Uh, we wanted to be able to view those test results and statistics and, and be able to do that in real time as well. And then we wanted to be able to understand those e easily understand those test results and not need to, some sort of statistician or or special experience to know how to read those. Um, one thing that uh, a previous um, developer who had been using OpenLoad uh, said is that the ability to stop tests is very important uh, because sometimes you start a test that could could be a 30 minute or an hour or a couple hour long test. And if something goes wrong near the beginning, if you can't stop the test then you have to wait and it's wasted time to, to wait for it to, to finish completely. So the ability to stop time was a useful um, requirement. Uh, easy to be able to point it at different environments that we're testing for. So if we had um, our QA environment versus our production environment, be able to switch between those um, to point the application at. Um, we wanted to be able to run multiple test scenarios because we had a lot of different things to test with Samago, and we wanted to be able to test it with multiple people, so multiple people could be administrating the uh, administering the test or at least developing them at the same time. And because we were under such a, a tight timeline, we wanted to get a quick startup. So, obviously, because of the name of the title of this presentation, we picked uh, JMeter. Uh, we picked it because it was open source and it didn't have any licensing costs, so we didn't have to worry about uh, getting any type of RFP going or, or any uh, license purchased um, that would slow us down. Um, the, the fact that it worked on all platforms was nice um, because we did have a mix of different environments uh, or different uh, platforms that our, uh, our people were working on. Um, so the ability to the flexibility for it to work on all those. Uh, we found that it, there was a lot of documentation about it, so it was well documented. Um, and during our investigation of those three from the previous slides, um, we had already uh, downloaded it and, and tried it out a little bit to try to get some of those answers for that uh, requirements gathering. And so it, um, we already had kind of a, a quick start because we um, it was pretty fast to learn to find out those answers. So uh, it was a pretty obvious choice and we thought, okay, we can't spend too much time on picking the product. So let's just go with this and we'll see how it goes. And it turned out that it was um, a good decision just to, to keep moving forward. So. Um, so as I said, we, we got started with jQuery pretty, or sorry, JMeter pretty um, pretty quick here. Um, and uh, it is pretty easy to install. You just go to the Apache site, jmeter.apache.org. Click on that download link on the left-hand side. It opens a zip file. And then inside of that zip file, there is a jmeter file for Unix or a jmeter.bat for Windows. You double click on that and it launches the um, the desktop application that it has, which I've got on the screen here. And um, there's a bit of a learning curve with uh, JMeter, but um, some of the things is, is just in the terminology of it. So um, for example, the test plan is the whole thing. It's the container that, uh, that has all the scripts inside of it and, and all the configuration that you do. And then threads are um, indicating of one test user. So it's a, it's a, it represents a, a user that's testing the application. So therefore, a group of threads is the group of the test users. Um, there's post processors, which takes the request, as I said, it's HTTP requests for what we were using it for. And then it can process it after the fact on that. You can add listeners and samplers and then recording controllers as well. So we had to, we had to have a little terminology uh, page to, to make sure that we were all talking about the same thing as we were learning how to use it. Um, the next thing we, we looked at is how to record a test script. Um, so this is the, the piece that you're going to play back as part of your stress testing. And so it, it was pretty straightforward too. So in the, um, 
JMeter application, you can click uh, on file and templates. And there's a bunch of different templates that they have. And one of them is recording. So it sets up all the different listeners and, and pieces that you need in order to um, easily start recording. Um, there's also a recording with uh, ThinkTime as well, which automatically adds in ThinkTime, which is handy as well. But uh, for this example, I'll just show you with the, the basic recording. Once you've done that, it automatically adds all that stuff to the left-hand side panel um, by default. Those are things that you're going to need with your recording. And then if you go to the HTTPS uh, test script recorder uh, ob object, then you can click on the start button, which will generate a local certificate that you can then uh, point your browser at. And that's just so that your browser knows um, about this application. It's kind of like a self-signed certificate. And that's just on that start button there. And then in your browser, you'll point to that certificate, and then you'll point a proxy at it. So um, you'll you'll change your uh, browser config uh, to point to that local host um, uh, that that is just started uh, when you click the start button. Once that's set up, you might have to go back in here if you haven't already if you haven't left it going and hit that start button again, and then it'll start recording. And so therefore, then you can go to your application that you've configured already. And you can start navigating around through uh, Sakai, for example. For our example, we did that. Uh, we logged in. We uh, went to a site. We took a test. We logged out. That was a basic test that we started with. Um, just be careful, though, that because all the requests are going through JMeter that are coming from your browser, that anything that you type in, such as username and passwords, get recorded in, in plain text. So you'll, you'll be able to see that. So um, just be careful, if, especially if you're working with colleagues. Um, that you're not sharing your password that way accidentally. When you're done, you come back to JMeter, you go back to that test script recorder, you hit the stop button, and then it's uh, saved in this view results tree. And this is where you can go to play. You're just going to, so on the side, you'll just click on that view results tree. And then at the top, you'll click the green play button and it will play back the, the steps that you've just recorded. And so, as I said, it was rec it's recording each request and so it plays back the request in the order that it gets and, um, and then continues on to the next one. So that's just setting up a basic one. Um, because of time today, I, I don't have time to go through all the, the additional steps that you will be doing, but um, essentially you'll, you'll add these regular expression extractors um, and they're just, they just got added to the left tree there. And that allows you to extract certain things from the request, such as tokens and, and different page state that you can then uh, manipulate um, and substitute with variables that you extract or inject in. So if, if there's a, a state variable that gets passed over to the next page, which it does in Samago and you, and you need to pass it over, um, there's certain um, uh, indicators that you need to pass over, um, such as like the time um, so that uh, Samago keeps everything in check. And uh, so you can pass those over with variables by just extracting them out and then turning them into variables and putting them back in. Um, you can also add think time uh, for the users between each step, um, which is something that you can control. You can make it a, a fixed number or a range of numbers, so it randomly picks between it, um, which is very handy. And then uh, you can also pass in a CSV of files, uh, sorry, of data as a file, and uh, you can add in user credentials. Um, so you can replace that username and password that you captured with some uh, login credentials, and then you can have multiple users log in that way by repeating it through with different threads. So there's lots of things that you can do. I'm just touching the surface here just to give you a, a sense of how you might do it from a stress testing perspective for Sakai. So now that we had an understanding of how these test scripts worked, um, the next thing we wanted to do was design some test scenarios. So going back to that page or the slide that I showed earlier about the use cases with Sakai or with Samago, we uh, we wanted to cover all of this stuff. So, but we didn't want to do hundreds of different test scripts because there is a, a bit of time commitment to developing these test scripts as well as developing the uh, the quiz and then all of the um, the test data that goes in between the two. So we wanted to see how we could group these things together to to be most efficient. And so we came up with these three test scenarios: basic, intermediate, and complicated. The basic was just all multiple choice questions, one question per page, one part, 30 questions with random answers. So pretty simple, nice and basic. We wanted to use that as a kind of a baseline to see what just a really basic test would look like. We moved up a level to the intermediate. Here we used almost all the question types. Uh, there were a few that we couldn't uh, get working perfectly with JMeter. So in, because of time, we, we decided just to skip those. But um, all the questions were on one page. We did actually did for intermediate both um, 
an all, all in one page and a one question per page um, uh, option. So we had two to go from. We had divided it into two parts just to add some variety and then where possible um, did the random answer order as well. Um, for the complicated, we focused on calculated questions because we thought that would be something that when you start a quiz, it would have to be uh, generated at the beginning of the quiz for the student. And we also actually pulled this from a question pool too. So we did one question per page as well. We did four parts and each, each part had 10 questions pulled from uh, question pools. And that was also to simulate a more complicated scenario where there's more things being genera generated at the beginning of the, uh, the start of that quiz attempt. We also added just for an extra request, um, the honor pledge to be enabled at the beginning, a little check mark that they have to enable at the beginning there, um, just for an extra thing. So those were the three test scenarios that we started with. Um, behind the scenes, we set up five uh, stress nodes. These are just virtual nodes that were running J meters uh, individually. And then we had them um, point to the test files and they could pull off what they needed. Um, we ran, we loaded uh, 20,000 OWL, local OWL users. So those are just local users we use to core to populate into OWL. Um, and then we divided that list of 20,000 unique users up into groups of, of 4,000. Um, so that each stress node had their own dedicated 4,000. And what this meant, what this allowed us to do is to make sure that when we ran the different tests, uh, we wouldn't have any collisions or, or any student taking the uh, t uh, quiz on multiple stress nodes at the same time or from multiple stress nodes at the same time in one OWL, um, in our OWL instance. So um, yeah, so as you can see on the bottom corner, we um, I broke it down so that there was um, 20 sections. And so that meant a thousand students per section. And that just gave me flexibility to throw those sections in wherever I needed to. So we set up five core sites, one for each stress node and put four sections in each. And that allowed us to um, to, to utilize the, the numbers that we were looking for. We used 20,000 because we didn't exactly know how big we wanted to go for, but um, that's, that's what we decided that um, we would aim for. Um, because we thought that would be more than enough. And uh, we weren't sure if we were gonna get there, but um, we thought we would just try. <laughs> um, and so we did start a little bit lower as we'll, uh, we'll see in a bit here. So, so after preparing and testing this test scripts in our QA environment, we were ready to move to production and test it there. And so we did this over a period of four uh, nights that we had eight hour production maintenance uh, windows set up for. It's been the longest period of, of Windows in a short amount of time in about a two and a half week period that we did, um, that we've ever done. So it uh, gave us the opportunity to um, test in a production environment uh, without affecting um, user, end users. And uh, we, we did about five to 11 rounds of testing per night over the four nights um, for a total of over 30 rounds of testing in total. Um, on our first round on the first night, we began with 5,000 testers and uh, we ran into some issues off the bat. We were able to tweak the system a little bit um, and, uh, and carry on and, uh, and learn from that. And so every time we ran a new round, we tried to run the same number of testers that we had in the previous round for each type of quiz. So um, a particular quiz type would be a particular round. So if we ran a basic uh, quiz round, with 5,000 testers, then we would repeat that for the intermediate quiz round and the complicated quiz round. Um, and that, that was so that we could look at the data at the end between those three types of quizzes and see if there was much noticeable difference between any type of the performance metrics that JMeter was capturing. And um, near the end of the first night and into the second night, we were able to run um, all the quiz types in the same round uh, all at the same time. So we had different stress servers running um, the basic and, and then the intermediate and the complicated all at the same time so that we could see what multiple different types of quizzes uh, were like at the same time. So before with the basic quiz per round, we were running essentially one quiz per round. And then this one allowed us to run three quizzes per round. Um, one of the rounds we, or a couple of the rounds, we, we also ran some background processes. So we had created test scripts for creating sites and for submitting assignments, uh, submissions to an assignment. And so we had that running at the same time that the quiz were to see if there was any noticeable difference. Um, we didn't notice a, a huge difference in that. So we only did that for a couple of rounds and then we just decided to focus on the quiz types. We did this all um, as a project team overnight. So uh, there was about uh, four to eight of us, uh, depending on the night um, that were online. Uh, 
we just did it through uh, Microsoft Teams and everyone was in the chat and we were communicating that way. Each person had a different role that they were playing. Um, for instance, I was launching the JMeter scripts and uh, and monitoring from a JMeter perspective. Somebody else was monitoring the database. Somebody else was monitoring the server uh, nodes and specs. And, and then somebody was going in to OWL and taking the quiz while they were um, while the quizzes were running, just to get a kind of a, a real world, real person experience of the quiz taking. And then we had a project manager that was overseeing everything and coordinating everything. So that worked out really well. We felt that the Teams chat was an equivalent to kind of being all in the same room and communicating that way. Um, and it worked out really well, and it was a lot of fun there, other than the late nights. Um, but it was it was a lot of fun, and, and uh, we worked well together. We thought um, for later rounds. By the third night, we ended up updating the assessments um, so that they all had the same number of quizzes or questions per each quiz type. And then we also uh, tuned the, the test scripts a bit um, so that they uh, we can introduce additional think time and, and use variables for the think time. Because what we learned from the first two nights was that um, there were some definite bottlenecks that were coming up and we wanted to focus on uh, spreading those bottlenecks out so we could really hone in to see where those bottlenecks were happening um, because we saw a lot of the beginning but we couldn't tell if it was is it the part of the login is it session creation is it going to the site is it creating the quiz because all that was really tightly compressed um, in the original first two days of rounds and so by spreading those out with some delays in between them we could definitely see where um, the uh, the impact was happening and which environment uh, or which system in the environment um, needed to be tuned a bit and then by the final night we were able to focus just on um, trying to balance the page response time with the number of testers. So we really were trying to figure out what is the ideal number for those uh, different types of quiz uh, uh, questions um, and uh, question types. So some of the things that uh, the testing revealed to us, as I mentioned earlier, were the bottlenecks. So these were the slow page response times that we saw. And uh, as I mentioned just a bit ago, they happened at the login. So this is when new sessions were coming on to the load balancer and coming onto the servers, as well as the logging in and creating of new sessions in OWL. Then we also saw some bottlenecks at the question or the quiz start time, and that's when all the questions are being generated, especially on the complicated one with the uh, calculated questions and the question pools. And then at the end, when everybody was submitting. So those were the three major bottlenecks that we saw uh, throughout the process. Um, as we spread it out, we were able to hone in on what parts of the system needed a bit of tuning. And we noticed that the load balancer was um, spiking in CPU um, to almost 100%, which had never happened before in the history of using this load balancer for, for many years. And so we were able to allocate some additional resources um, after the, I think that was the first or second night. And that really helped um, for subsequent uh, rounds of testing um, for the following nights. We were able to also, in between different nights and rounds, add additional uh, memory and max threads from our Tom, to our Tomcats, and that helped with their performance. And so we were able to retest some of those rounds with the, with the additional memory and, and max threads, and that helped. And then early on, we had to decrease our database connection pool um, because we were putting too much strain on the database with all of our nodes uh, hitting it all at the same time. And so by decreasing that connection pool, what we found is that it put the pressure more on the Tomcats, but with their additional uh, resources, they were able to, to hold that. So there would still be a delay from the end user's perspective, but it wasn't crashing the single point, which would be the database. It was spreading that, that strain over the multiple Tomcat nodes. So some other things that we found was that think time and offsetting the quiz start time can help immensely. So we found that as we introduced more think time, and although our think time was there, it was still less than what probably would be a normal student's think time. Um, that, that little bit of think time that we added, which could be anywhere from like 30 seconds to two minutes um, between different steps, um, which may be less than what the students are actually using to think about a particular question, um, that really helped in, um, in taking off the load because we were able to randomize that with JMeter. Um, we, all the requests weren't lining up uh, exactly together and that really helped the overall system. And then we didn't see any noticeable difference between the number of quizzes that we were running versus um, just running one quiz. What we found more was the testers mattered. This could be just because our sample size of the number of quizzes that we could simultaneously run with just five uh, stress servers was limited to just those five. But um, what we found is by um, the number of testers that we were using uh, mattered more than um, 
the difference. So we were t testing the same number of users with one quiz versus the same number of users with um, multiple quizzes, and we, we didn't see any noticeable difference. So we just focused in on the number of testers there. And obviously, the complicated uh, quiz took more resources than the basic one, and um, we uh, account that for the, uh, the question pools and the calculated questions and all that work there. So then once we had all those results back, we were able to do some acting on those. So the first thing we did is we had some conclusions and, and we concluded that yes, we can use we can run final exams in OWL. So that will happen next month in December when our final exams run. So we don't have the results just yet, but uh, we have been running um, our midterm exams over the last few months and they've been going pretty smoothly. So we're, we're happy with those results so far and the tuning that we did. Um, as far as determining the, the max number that we could uh, provide to our exam scheduling team, uh, as we saw throughout this presentation, there are many variables that factor into determining what that max number is, and that there will be no single number of test takers because of the number of various Samago scenarios that exist. So what we ended up doing was we took the complicated quiz type and the results from our complicated quiz rounds and used that as our, our number because we thought the other types of quizzes will be uh, less difficult or less demanding of the system uh, than the most complicated ones. So we use that as our, our basis to determine the numbers that we wanted. And we use the results from those complicated uh, quiz rounds to, to base on our number. Um, and then once we determined a number that we were all comfortable with um, from the testing team, then we reduce that slightly so that uh, we could account for any background processes that were happening, such as uh, instructors um, setting up new quiz or new courses or uh, students submitting to assignments or other activity that's happening on the system. So we just reduced it by um, a, a bit to, to account for those and we gave that as our number for our exam schedule. Um, we did conclude that staggering those multiple simultaneous assessments, so if there were multiple assessments happening at the same time, if they could be staggered even by 10 minutes, that would have significant improvements um, because it would mean that not all the students are logging in and starting the quiz at the same time. And then um, obviously, as we were going through, we were tuning the environment and we saw improvements there um, that uh, we've been able to use throughout the term. And then just in conclusions about JMeter here, it is a very powerful tool, especially for um, simulating large number of users. Um, we just touched the surface on what it could probably do, um, but it was it was very impressive to me that uh, how much we could um, get up and running and, and throw at it uh, um, in a very short amount of time. The JMeter documentation could be a little bit better. Uh, it exists, there's a lot of it there. Um, uh, but we did find that it wasn't as clear in some parts that as we were hoping to, so we would have to go to outside sources. But luckily, because JMeter has been around for a while, there were a lot of online resources that we could use, um, including Stack Overflows and, and video tutorials and a lot of other blogs that are dedicated to the topic. So there were a lot of resources out, of the, out there. There were some differences as versions have changed over the years, so you had to be a little bit careful about that, but there were a lot of um, resources that you could use to, to learn, and that allowed us to, to learn quickly how to use it. As I said, our final exams are next uh, next month in December, so that'll be really interesting to see um, some real world examples and real world um, results there. Um, and then one of the things about JMeter is that it's a request based rather than interface based testing uh, tool. So if um, if you're looking at testing more of interface um, response time and and some things on uh, about how your interface works, that's not going to um, be something that you're going to be able to um, use with JMeter because it's just looking capturing at for us those HTTP requests and then spitting those back out. So if, if there's something more interface based that you want, you might want to look at one of the other tools that we talked about earlier. And as I mentioned, there is a bit of a learning curve, but it was pretty good. And now that we have used it with Sakai, I'm planning on creating a Confluence page or some sort of documentation um, for the Sakai community based on the page that we created internally. Um, that talks about how you can use it specifically for Sakai. So I hope to have that out soon. And I'll announce that on the mailing list. And um, I can see that our, our experience now with JMeter, we, we'll, we can reuse that experience and, and use it in the future for future testing when we do upgrades and that sort of thing. And maybe the community might want to look at using that for um, QA as well, because we can put some automation behind that as well. 
So we're out of time. So um, thank you for um, for attending today. And uh, let me know if you have any questions, and I'd be happy to answer. Thanks.